Hello, everybody. I'm Catherine Children, and my topic is about a portrait that I think is of Mary Veer, who is Oxford's sister, the Earl of Oxford. And here she is. This 16th century portrait of a young lady is at the Veeney House of Art and Knowledge in Canterbury, England. According to the inscription, she is 15 years old and her picture made in 1567. She wears an elaborate outfit covered with pearls, gold link chains, and two jeweled pendants. Clearly, she came from a wealthy aristocratic family. A similar costume was worn by Elizabeth, Countess of Lincoln, uh, seen here on the left, which is at the National Gallery of Ireland. For over 100 years, the Beanie House Lady has been identified as Lady Susan Bertie, later Countess of Kent. On January 1st, 1555, Lady Susan and her mother fled England to Europe in fear of religious persecution. She was one year old at the time, according to the contemporary historian, John Fox. Bertie's birth year, therefore, was late 1553 or early 1554. The Beanie House lady, however, was born circa 1552 as gleaned from the inscription. This is the first reason to doubt Susan Bertie is the lady portrayed. This lady also lacks facial resemblance to her supposed parents, Richard Bertie and Catherine, Baroness Willoughby de Eresby and Duchess of Suffolk. Bertie's father had brown hair and her mother's hair was shown brown in one portrait and red in another earlier portrait. Both portraits show straight hair. The Beanie House Lady has curly red hair. This contrasts with that of her supposed brother, Peregrine Bertie, who had straight brown hair. No other Susan Bertie portrait survives to compare this with, but there is an alleged portrait of her also inscribed 1567, which appears on the Tudor Times website. It was previously titled in an auction as Portrait of a Lady. If it is Susan Bertie, then she and the Beanie House Lady are two different people. In 1570, Susan Bertie, about age 16, married Reynold Gray of Rest. Two years later, she became a countess when Gray successfully reclaimed the Earldom of Kent. He died soon after. Bertie remarried in 1581 to the soldier Sir John Wingfield. He died 15 years later during the capture of Cadiz. Widowed and impoverished, Bertie received a hundred pound annuity from the crown. She was still alive in 1611. Her only child, Peregrine Winfield, was alive in 1599, named in his uncle's will. The Beanie House portrait's earliest known history is that in 1912, it was in the Earl of Lindsay's art collection. This earldom was created in 1626 for Bertie's nephew, Robert Bertie, her brother's eldest son, a title that continues today. If Peregrine Winfield predeceased his mother or died childless, childless, then his mother's property would likely have passed to her brother's family, thus explaining the portrait's provenance. A simpler explanation, however, is that the Beanie House Lady is not Susan Bertie, but another aristocratic lady of the Bertie family of a similar age, Lady Mary Vere, daughter of the 16th Earl of Oxford. She had a definite tie to the first Earl of Lindsay. She was his mother. Mary Vere was married to Susan Bertie's brother, Peregrine. A 17th century record shows that a portrait of Mary Veer was at Grimsthorpe Castle, Lincolnshire, the Bertie family seat. The presence chamber held a portrait described as my old Lord Peregrine, one of my old Lady Mary. Was this picture the Beanie House Lady? 
Or was it this full-length portrait of Lady Mary Vere once owned by the Berti family? This engraving appeared in an 1896 book about the family. It is another previously unknown portrait of Mary as far, as far as I know. She looks about age 50, her fingers touching the head of a big dog. Her dress was described as red and her rough white. This is a portrait um, of Lady Mary's son, Robert, her eldest son, who was similarly portrayed portrayed with a large dog. Mary's full length picture was auctioned in 1949, today's location unknown. Her dress was described as red, the rough wife, which we already, I already said, okay. The portrait's inscription added by a later hand reads, Mary de Vere, only heiress to Edward, Earl of Oxford. That was true before Edward took his 1575 European tour Thereafter, he had three daughters. In absence of a color image of this picture, Mary Veer's look can be, looks can be discerned from surviving portraits of her brother, Edward, in the middle, and her half-sister, Lady Mary Veer, the Baroness Windsor. The Beanie House Lady not only resembles them, but shares their traits of high foreheads, arched brows, blue eyes, and curly red hair. Notably, stars appear in the Beanie House inscription, possibly alluding to the De Vere family's heraldic symbol. Like the Beanie House portrait, Catherine Vere's portrait is inscribed 1567. Both pictures have identical dimensions and artist attribution, which is master of the Countess of Warwick, now Lady Arnold Derrickson. If these two ladies are sisters, then these portraits could have been painted at the same time. Side note about Catherine Veer. Her birth year is unknown, but inscriptions on two surviving portraits say she is age 24 in 1567 and age 25 in 1568, making her birth year circa 1543. This should dismiss claims made by the Oxford DNB and others that she was born about three to five years earlier. Catherine Veer likely married Edward Baron Windsor soon after he succeeded the barony in 1558, when she was about age 15. Their first son was born in 1559, followed by three more shown in this family picture. Mary Veer's birth year is also unknown. Her parents married August 1548. Her brother Edward was born in April 1550. The Beanie House lady was born circa 1552, a date that works for Mary. Mary, however, was not mentioned in her father's will of December 1552, but she was mentioned in the Visitation of Essex of 1552, although there is some doubt that the visitation actually occurred that year. But we don't know 100%. Mary Veer wedded Peregrine Berti sometime after Christmas 1577 and before March 12, 1578. Despite previous disapproval by Queen Elizabeth I, Berti's parents and her brother, her parents were then deceased. The couple had known each other as teenagers while living in the household of William Cecil, Lord Burley. If she is the Beanie House lady, then she was three years older than Peregrine, who was born in October 1555, which perhaps influenced the marriage objection. If this portrait is Mary Vere, then Beanie House has a singular honor, owning a portrait of William Shakespeare's sister, Shakespeare being the pen name of the 17th Earl of Oxford, which was later confused with William Shaxper of Stratford-on-Avon. With this in mind, a marriage re referred to in Love's Labor's Lost was likely that of Mary and Peregrine. 
the princess asks Lady Maria if she knows Lord Longaville. And Lady Maria says, I know him, madam, at a marriage feast between Lord Perigore and the beauteous heir of Jake's Falconbridge, solemnized. In Normandy saw I this Longaville. Lady Maria is the princess's attendant, just as Lady Mary Vere was Queen Elizabeth's attendant. Lady Maria knows Lord Longaville from the marriage feast of Lord Perigord and the beauteous heir of Jacques Falconbridge. She saw him in Normandy. It is believed the De Vere family ancestors came from Normandy. Lady Maria continues. A man of sovereign parts he is esteemed, well fitted in arts, glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill that he would will well, that he would well. The only soil of his fair virtue's gloss, if virtue's gloss will stain it with any soil, is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will, whose edge hath power to cut, whose will still wills, it should none spare that come within his power. So Longaville is glorious in arms and has a sharp wit, characteristics applicable to Peregrine Berti, a career soldier and diplomat. An early obituary called him pregnant in wit and practiced especially in martial or military actions. In a personal letter, Berti admitted that he is testy and choleric which is part of my nature, accounting for Longaville's cutting wit. Further into the same scene, Longaville asks Boyet about Lady Maria's parents. Longaville, Longaville says, pray you, sir, whose daughter? Boyet, her mother's, I've heard. Longaville, God's blessing on your beard. Boyet, Good sir, be not offended. She is an heir of Falconbridge. Longaville. Nay, my collar is ended. She is a most sweet lady. Lady Maria is an heir of Falconbridge, indicating a relation between her and the beauteous heir of Jake's Falconbridge. This could be another clue that Lady Maria is Lady Mary Vere, who was once her brother's main heir. His 1575 will noted that his whole possession would pass to her. She was evidently famous for this as it was inscribed on her portrait with the dog. Note how Longaville's color was raised by Boyette's teasing, Peregrine Berti's self-described characteristic. The beauteous heir married Lord Paracourt, a name that sounds a lot like Lord Peregrine. Also, Longaville calls Lady Maria fair son, Fair and Veer, or Ver, were similarly pronounced. Longaville and Maria later couple in the play. Altogether, it appears that the marriage alluded to was that of Mary Veer and Peregrine Berti, which the playwright, Mary's brother, wished to memorialize. In other Shakespeare plays, the name Falconbridge hints at the Earl of Oxford. In King John, Philip Falconbridge was accused of bastardy by his brother, who wants him disinherited. Oxford was accused of the same thing by his half-sister, Catherine. In Merchant of Venice, Falconbridge is a young baron of England and Portia's suitor. Nerissa says, what say you then to Falconbridge, the young baron of England? Portia. You know, I say nothing to him, for he understands not me, nor I him. He hath neither Latin, French, nor Italian. He is a proper man's picture, but alas, who can converse with a dumb show? How oddly he is suited. I think he bought his doublet in Italy, his round hose in France, his bonnet in Germany, and his behavior everywhere. This describes Oxford in reverse. And an apparent self-mockery, Oxford did know those languages, was a nonstop talker, wore European clothing, and writer Gabriel Harvey lampooned him for adopting Italian manners. 
A falcon bridge is also cited in Henry V and in Henry VI, parts one and part three. Curiously, the anonymous 16th century comedy called Look About You features a Lady Marian Falconbridge, sister to the humorous, quote unquote, Earl of Gloucester, and she was called Beauteous. The Bertie marriage reference dates Love's Labor's Lost circa 1578 which is incompatible with orthodoxies 1594-1595. Yet in 1578, a contemporary author evidently knew the play. In context of books and authors, John Florio wrote this line in Florio, His First Fruits. We, not, we need not speak so much of love. All books are full of love with so many authors that it were labor lost to speak of love. First fruits also included the phrase, Venetia, qui non ti vedi, non ti pretia, which was quoted in Love's Labor's Lost. First fruits subtitle says the book contains familiar speech, merry proverbs, witty sentences, and golden sayings pointing to possible Shakespeare borrowings. Since the play was imprinted until the 1590s, Florio must have seen a performance before his book's registration in August, 1578. In 1587, the court comedy Endymion by John Lilly also echoes a line from Love's Labor's Lost. the Mayan in act five. I will not command love for it cannot be enforced. Let me entreat it. And in love's labor's lost, shall I command thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. Lily was Oxford's private secretary in the 1580s. In 1598, Love's Labor's Lost was an old play, wrote Robert Toff in his book, Alba. Love's Labor's Lost, I once did see a play, he clept so. The Reader's Encyclopedia of Shakespeare says that once suggests a considerable span of time. Perhaps Toff saw a performance in 1581 while a student at Oxford University where plays were often performed. Interestingly, the preceding poem in Alba was Toft wearing Tawny and Black due to his forsaken love. Tawny and Black, my courtly colors be. Tawny, because forsook I am, I wear. Black, since mine Alba's love is dead to me. This exact theme and phrasing occurred in the Earl of Oxford's 1576 poem. For Black and Tawny will I wear which morning colors be. Queen Elizabeth viewed Love's Labor's Lost according to the play's first surviving edition. The evidence therefore suggests the play was initially presented at the Queen's court as early as 1578. The lines describing Peregrine Berti's character, however, were likely later editions as he would be addressed as Lord after November, 1580, when he inherited the barony of Willenby, and his fame as a brave soldier started in 1586. Interestingly, in 1582, Queen Elizabeth sent Peregrine to Elsinore Castle in Denmark, where Shakespeare's tragedy, Hamlet, is set, to invest the Danish king as a garter knight. Another character, Maria, in Twelfth Night, could also portray Mary Vere. She, like Lady Maria in Love's Labor's Lost, is a gentle lady's attendant, like Mary Vere was attendant to Queen Elizabeth. And noted by the Ogburns, Sir Andrew Eggcheek greets Maria saying, bless you, fair shrew. Fair and Vere were similarly pronounced. She also called 
is called fair lady and true bread. Vir means truly or true in Latin and Italian. Fair shrew suggests Shakespeare's comedy Taming of the Shrew, in which a shrewish lady marries Petruchio, a name that could also suggest Peregrine. Maria, who is called Mary four times in the play, is witty and is a practical joker. Lady Maria in Love's Aver's Loss also partakes in witty and body repartee. Two scenes later in Twelfth Night, the clout says to Maria, many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. And for turning away, let summer bear it out. The Ogburns, and this is in this star of England, saw this line as Oxford Shakespeare's advice to his sister to not turn away from her marriage. Within the first year, a letter reported a certain unkindness grown between Peregrine and Mary. Mary didn't turn away, but about 20 years later, they were formally separated. They had seven children. Here is a portrait of her second son, Peregrine Berti Jr. And here is a portrait on the right of her eldest son, Robert Berti, later the Earl of Lindsay. Peregrine Sr. died in 1601. Mary remarried, but separated not long after. She died about age 72 in Hackney, supposedly on June 24th, 1624. Her brother died on the very same day, 20 years previously, also in Hackney. In conclusion, documented in the 17th century was a portrait of Lady Mary Vere at Grimsthorpe Castle where she lived. Considered lost, it could be the Beanie House portrait, currently identified as Lady Susan Berti, who was Mary's sister-in-law. Age, provenance, and a strong resemblance to Mary's siblings favor her as this lady. If so, then the portrait was traditionally known as Susan Berti, or someone in modern times made an incorrect guess. Such misidentifications are common. For example, Lady Catherine Veer's portrait was once identified as Lady Jane Grey. This portrait of Mary Veer reveals her birth year, circa 1552, and confirms that she was beauteous like Lady Maria in Love Slavers Lost. Reclaiming it as a portrait of the true Shakespeare's sister helps to bring in living art, a quote from Love, Love's Labor's Lost, the great author's family and characters. Hopefully one day pictures of Oxford's mother Marjorie and father John, the 16th Earl, will turn up too, or perhaps get re-identified. The portrait of Edward de Vere, 17th Earl of Oxford, is on the cover of my book, Shakespeare Suppress, the Uncensored Truth about Shakespeare and his works. Thank you very much. Wonderful, Catherine. Thank you so much for that fascinating talk. Uh, where is the portrait house today? I may have missed that if it was in the beginning of your talk. It's at the Beanie House of Art and Knowledge in Canterbury, Kent in England. Great. And do you think that there is any uh, possibility that um, it was intentionally misattributed or you think it's likely just an error? I think it was an error. I mean, it, it came from uh, the collection of the Earl of Lindsay, so it was probably passed down through the generations and could easily have been misidentified. Right. Great. Well, lots of praise for your talk. It was really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.